Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to another We Can workshop. I'm so excited that you're here with us today. Uh, and of course, Debbie Chen, the holistic CFO, is joining us from Vancouver, BC. And so hats off to her for getting herself up super early this morning to be with us. We're so grateful for that. She's got a lot of juicy goodness uh, in a workshop today that we're going to be sharing on understanding your money mindset archetype. And so I was thinking this morning that, um, in fact, this is very timely right across Canada, if you're in Canada, because today is the day that SIBA loans have to be repaid. If you're a, a business owner, and I was thinking, you know what, this is a good day to talk about money mindset, because I think there's a lot of stories going on in a lot of people's minds right now about, you know, business in general and um, money as well. So uh, I think that we, we didn't plan that per se, but I think that it's a fitting day because some of you might be grappling with some of those thoughts and stories in your mind. Uh, so we're going to get into it in just a moment. For those of you I haven't met before, my name is Carrie Ramsey, and I'm the project manager for the Weekend Project, which is located in Kingston, Ontario, at Queen's University. And I would love to invite you to go ahead and introduce yourselves in the Zoom chat to one another. Um, these are always great training sessions, but also, of course, a great opportunity to network and to get to know each other and your businesses. So if you would like to let us know your business, if you have a website link or a LinkedIn link that you'd like to share, we would love to see that as well. And while you're taking a moment to introduce yourselves, I will acknowledge that today uh, we are, of course, situated on the ancestral territory here at Queen's University in Kingston, um, on the ancestral territory of the Anishinaabe and the Haudenosaunee peoples. And so working together with women entrepreneurs from all backgrounds and walks of life, we value diversity and the richness of conversation and collaboration that happens even in workshops like this. It's such a treat to be a part of that. And this only comes when we honor and respect each other's heritage. And so in particular, I'd like to acknowledge the indigenous peoples whose resilience, culture and business philosophies have been such an important part of our shared history. Miigwech, and I thank you so much uh, for being a part of today's workshop. If you're interested in finding out where you are situated on which ancestral territory, you can visit nativeland.ca, native-land.ca. All right, so it's so wonderful to have you all joining us today. Thanks so much for showing up for yourselves and your business. Um, I know we're excited to get into it. So without further ado, I will hand the virtual microphone to Debbie. Thank you so much, Debbie, for joining us. Um, it's all over to you. Thanks so much. Thank you so much, Carrie. And thank you for having us, me and Diana, um, in into the weekend space. This is such a great project we can to empower women and especially entrepreneurs and thank you everyone for being here today uh, I want to give uh, a special thank you to, Di to Diana it is seven o'clock here in BC and she is my community outreach manager and she's always just been with me for a while and um, I cannot do this without her so thank you so let's get started So today we'll be talking about the three different money mindset archetypes. And I will start with a little bit of an introduction. It won't take too long because you've read, you've all read the introduction, a little bit about me on the website. Um, but I like to talk a little bit about how I got into money mindset. Um, so I've been an accountant for almost 15 years now. Um, and I think right before the pandemic, I was just feeling a little lost. I was feeling like I hit a wall. I felt like what I was doing wasn't really aligned. I, well, I didn't really know what my purpose was. And I didn't really know why I was doing what I do. Um, so I ended up talking to a friend who I was actually a coach uh, and I didn't know at the time. And she said, oh, have you tried coaching? Why don't I have this? She's like, I'm, this is such an Asian thing. She's like, I've got this coupon uh, for the fundamentals of coactive coaching training. Would you like to, would you like to try it? And I said, well, you know what? I don't, I don't know if coaching is my next career move. And she's just kind of said, you don't have, you don't, I'm not asking you to be a coach, but try it out and maybe you'll get value out of it. And uh, she was, her intuition was being on, took the course, completely fell in love with it. And oh, sorry, my slideshow went away, um, completely fell in love with it. And um, 
And that was the start of my coaching journey. How I got into money mindset was um, I was actually coaching a client on her career transition. And she said, Debbie, you talk about money a lot. You've got the money background. You, you're an accountant by trade. And um, you, I talk a lot about energy and, and vibration of money. And that's how I got into money mindset. And the minute I found money mindset, it was like, wow, we as women, especially women of color, really need money mind the just bring in more, a more balanced money mindset because we're constantly in the hustle culturally historically we were so restricted and um we're finally at a place where we can have um the time and the 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 space to do that and the resources so this is how my money mindset journey started and my slideshow is telling me to move on so i am going to do that <laughs> and slideshow is like okay Okay, keep going. And I was like, all right. Okay, so a little agenda of uh, what we're doing today. So, of course, we'll be talking about the three types of money <coughs> mindset. And before that, we'll start with a little introduction of what money mindset is all about. And um, before that, I, I what I do with any uh, workshop, any one-on-one -on -one coaching is to set an agreement and alliance as to how we will hold the space for each other today uh, for the next 90 minutes. Um, so we'll start with confidentiality and I can't see all 40 of you. So I'm going to assume that um, when I say raise your hand, everyone's raising their hands, but confidentiality means um, we will be recording. We are recording right now, um, but what's going to happen to, when you go into breakout rooms, um, everything that, anything that you share in the breakout rooms stays confidential because um, that's not going to be recorded when you come back you'll share um, some of what you've learned and maybe a little bit of your stories and we will not record unless um, actually no we'll when you come back we'll record but if there's anything that you like I want I want to share right now and I like this not to be recorded let us know everything is confidential we want everyone to feel completely safe um, and um, yeah, I think that's all I have to say on confidentiality. Uh, do we all hold each other, like everything that we say in the breakout room when we come back, we make sure that we don't share unless we have um, everyone's permission to feel safe in the space. And if you do, I would like just to see a few raise of hands. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Um, and then again, I talked about I talked about psychological safety and I can't stress about psychological safety enough. Um, because when we talk about money, especially in the women's space, it's such an intimate and it can be a sensitive topic. Um, so share as much or as little as you like. Don't feel like you're being pressured. I will never call on you. Um, and always feel free to raise your hand. Uh, I can see I can see all of you, well, most of you here at the first page. Um, so yeah, share as much or as little as you like and uh, hold each other as that as well. And is that okay with everyone? Thank you. Perfect. Um, and the next one is, this is, if if you've never delved into money mindset, or if money mindset is new to you, um, when we're talking about scarcity and abundance and things like that, a lot of guilt and shame can come up. I'm not saying that it will for all of you. But if it does, just make sure that you bring a lot of love and self compassion as you explore your money mindset as you identify it. Um, and just be really gentle with yourself as we talk about this. And also we hold space for that for everyone else as well. And so if you all agree to do that for yourself and for everyone else, raise of hand. And uh, we will have a Q&A, thank you. We will have a Q&A at the end of the session. I will try to answer as many questions as possible um, during the workshop. Um, but if there's anything that I think might be beneficial to wait, um, I will ask you to drop it in the chat so Diana can keep track of that for me. Um, and so, yeah, and so on that note, let's get started. Is there any questions before we start? We're all good. Okay. All right. So what is money mindset and why is it so important? The definition of money mindset, or at least the one that I use, is that money mindset refers to our personal beliefs and attitudes towards money. It shapes our beliefs about money and our behaviors around money. So how we spend, how we save, how we think about 
how we how our body feels when money comes into our bank and when paycheck comes or your invoice gets paid um, our money mindset is influenced by our personal money stories i understand that you uh you, um, ladies have done a money story workshop so this is a perfect one that happens right after that yeah so your money stories really influence your money mindset it's not just thoughts it's also emotions and how it makes our body feel so you I'll, I'll mention a little bit about that in each and every different one of the money mindset as well. Our body holds so much wisdom and information and allow us to see where we sit, um, the where we are in the money mindset archetype. And um, yeah, and so our body just gives a lot of information and emotions, our body sensations. It tells us a lot about our money mindset. Um a balanced money mindset. So the effects on a positive word versus a negative money mindset. A balanced money mindset is so important. It's it's not, I think it's, it's for me personally, I might be biased. I think it's more important than financial knowledge because you can have all the knowledge uh, in the world. And if you don't have the right mindset um, to manifest and to calling what you want, um, you will always feel like you don't have enough. And that's why I think my mindset is so important. Um, it's all a part of financial literacy. Um, it gives us a sense of security. Um, it cultivates the beliefs in our ability to manage our money, to make sound financial decisions and create new financial opportunities. A disempowered money mindset affects our self-worth um, it affects the way we manage our finances, um, and it really affects the way we succeed in this world. And so before we dive into each money mindset, um, I just like to stress again that your money, your financial success isn't just about managing your money. It's also about managing your mind, your mindset. And once you change your mindset, you can change your wealth. So we're actually going to go into a small group discussion. So you'll be in breakout rooms for, I think, four times today, and you'll be in the same group. Um, how many people do we have right now? Carrie, do we have everybody? Oh, you're on we mute. Have 20, we have 20 people here right now, so okay. um, you can divide as a, as you see. Perfect. Be, oh, okay. 20, 21. We might have people that join, but that's all right. Okay, perfect. So then uh, you'll be in the breakout room for about seven minutes. I'm going to create that right now. And I'm actually going to stop sharing my slide for a quick second. I'll drop the questions in the uh, in the chat. Okay, perfect. So I can see everybody. There you go. Okay. So yeah, we'll be in You'll be in the breakout room for about seven minutes. And these are the questions that I like you to discuss and reflect on. So I'll start doing that. This is where we're like, beam me up, Scotty. And we all like go into a new room <laughs> magically. Isn't Zoom space just the most fabulous thing that right, happened yeah, in really yeah during the pandemic? Yeah, it's insane. Silver lining for sure. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so just give me a few minutes here. And I'm going to push pause at this point, which I probably should have done a moment ago. Pushing pause. Today we'll be well be talking about the three different types of money mindset. I'm not very creative with names. So is the scarcity mindset. Oh, These Debbie, the slides aren't back up. Did you want them to be? Oh, right. Okay, there we go. For Thank us you. visual learners who need to see it and hear it. No, this is... <laughs> That's yeah. me. I love the slides. So there you go. There they are. Thanks. Perfect. Yeah, so um, the... When I talked with my clients and the way I've learned money mindset is that there are the three main types. And again, not very creative names. It's the scarcity mindset, the sufficiency mindset, and the abundance mindset. Um, pretty self-explanatory, but we'll dive deeper into it now. Okay. Making sure I have notes. 
So someone mentioned the war and the history. And so I always say that the scarcity mindset is, is the PTSD of the Great Depression. Some of us have experienced a little bit of that. A lot of us haven't. Um, and um, it doesn't matter whether we have we were in that period of time or not. It's less than 100 years ago. It's a little crazy if we think about it. And so that becomes a huge part of our lives, right? Like our resources were poor. Um, and um, we just didn't have a lot. And men are out there um, making uh, feeding their family, women are at home uh, taking care of their families, and that creates the culture, that creates the money story, that creates the environment that we are still a part of until uh, this day. And so the scarcity mindset, it, it sounds like scarcity. There's just not enough to go around. There's not enough resources. There's not enough opportunities um, that there if some it's like if we have a pie that represents the resources just any kind of resources in the world that this pie is limited and there's more people there's more resources that we need than the actual pie that's available and um so if i have a slice of that pie you have a, a slice less of that pie and that's why we were like we can't we need to fight and we need to compete and historically again women were restricted from a lot of things for example, voting rights. And that that restriction and inequality can show up as a, a scarcity mindset that we constantly feel like we need to overcontribute and prove and to be perfect in order to be of value, to be worthy of what we receive in the body. Scarcity mindset, actually, we'll do that in, in a little bit. Scarcity mindset feels like it's me against the world. It's me against everyone else. And everyone, if again, if everyone else wants that piece of pie, pie is limited, I must fight. I must fight and compete. And in the body, it feels heavy. Like if we're talking about scarcity mindset, nobody's like, oh, this feels really good right now. It's heavy. It can show up in different parts of your body. And so just notice as we're talking about this, where it's showing up, is it in your heart? Is it in your shoulder? How is your posture? Um, but yeah, it's generally very tight, very restrictive in your body. And when you have been conditioned to think this way, when you have been conditioned in um, an environment that there's a lot of scarcity, um, it comes out as uh, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy of abundance. I must hustle. We talked a little bit about that. I must hustle in order to receive. Life is hard. And I don't, you hear this sometimes. I don't have a choice, but I just have to do this. Um, and, um, and, and I can't ask for what I want because I should be grateful. Um, and, and this applies to everything. It doesn't, it's not scarcity mindset doesn't, isn't just about money. It shows up in your relationship. It can also show up in your health. It's like, oh, it's good enough. Oh, I don't need to take care of myself. Everyone else um, is more important uh, and everyone else takes um, precedence, their priority before I take care of myself, I take care of my body. So it can show up in all parts of your life. Sometimes scarcity mindset also sounds like I don't have enough time. I'm not pretty enough. I'm not good enough with numbers. I am not smart enough. There's not, there's um, not enough opportunities out there. Um, and especially in our current state and economy, there's a lot of um, instability. Interest rate is all over the place. Thankfully, hopefully it's coming down. Um, but yeah, in the state of economy, it, that scarcity, when we are in the scarcity mindset, um, that can add and escalate the way we feel about money. And so the scarce, again, scarcity mindset provokes even more competition when there's less, um, where we feel like there's less and it doesn't promote uh, collaboration. And it triggers a lot of our ego. And I love, I think ego, when we use it to our benefit, it can really drive us to create beautiful things. And when we have an imbalance of ego, which is what scarcity mindset triggers, and then we're in that hustle. We're in that competition. We're in that I must win. Um, so yeah, scarcity mindset triggers a lot of that. Um, and again, scarcity mindset just, just doesn't have a lot of love and compassion to ourselves. And that's what us women are all about, right? We're all about love and compassion. But when we feel like resources is scarce, we don't have a lot of love and compassion. And most importantly, we don't have a lot of love and compassion for ourselves. 
And so the effect on, um, on how scarcity mindset affects on the way we operate is we chase money. We uh, think that we need to do more in order to access um, more in life. Um, we might over contribute or putting in more work or choose to work with clients that we really don't want to or feel like we don't have a choice um, or stay in a job that we hate because you just feel like, well, what if I do something else and that's not what I like and it's really hard to find a job right now. And so that's why a lot of people burn out because you're doing what you don't care for uh, and you're feeling like you're doing it for the money and you feel like you're stuck and you feel like you're not being valued, but you can't go anywhere. And so, and we talk a little bit about perfectionism, scarcity mindset can affect the way we see ourselves and how we structure ourselves to be like, oh, we must be perfect in order to be worthy. And that can create a lot of victim mentalities. It's like, oh, this is just how the world works. And, you know, I'm a victim of, of this environment and there's just no way out. And so again, feel that in your body. It's a little depressing. It's very, it's very, very heavy. And so as we're exploring, and obviously scarcity mindset is the first of the three, as we're exploring these different mindsets, it's really important, again, to bring that compassion and love to ourselves. If we're noticing as we're going through um, different mindsets, you're like, oh, no, that's me. How terrible. Noticing the self-talk, noticing if there's any guilt, any shame that's coming up. And just be very gentle with yourself, That knowing that the blame and the guilt doesn't help us get out of scarcity mindset. We'll talk a little bit about how to get out of that, um, but it's to bring us back to that calm space. So um, be really, really gentle with yourself. If you're noticing that, okay, I think I have a little bit of scarcity mindset because we will talk about how to get out of it in a little bit. And we're actually uh, going to give you, I'm just going to give you about five minutes to just kind of talk about what's coming up and um, as we are talking about this very depressing archetype. Um, and yeah, it's just like, how does your body feel? So I'm going to stop sharing and send the question in the chat. So sufficiency mindset, I call it the, the stepping stone to the abundance mindset. It's sufficiency mindset is when um, it's no longer me against everyone else. It's that we're in this world together and there's always enough there's always enough in the pie and notice what how the energy is in your your space the minute we start saying that like I notice for myself that I start feeling more calm that ah there's always going to be enough and all is well sufficiency mindset uh, in the body is a little lighter right? There's less stress. There's less tightness. I feel a little bit more relaxed. Like I, I'm even noticing the way I speak slows down a little bit. Um, it's a place where we have more gratitude and appreciation for everything that's around us. And sufficiency mindset helps us get out of that bad feeling place. To get here, we need to just kind of take a step back. So if you're in a scarcity mindset, and you're kind of like, God, I feel like I can't breathe and I'm burning out and like what is happening in my world if you just take a deep breath and take a step back and just start noticing acknowledge what you already have in your space in your life there's a roof above our head we have running water um, and we have food on our table we're more than okay and so that's what sufficiency mindset feels like and then from this place you can then tap into the belief of there is enough for all of us. When you're in scarcity, it's hard to get in, to tap into that. And when, you, when you're in that calm space, take a step back and you can go, okay, we're okay. Everyone's okay. There's enough for everyone. There's enough to go around. That the pie is always providing exactly the right amount. And that, um, again, it's um, all is well. And this doesn't mean to fake it till you make it. You know, like a lot of times people talk about uh, shifting your vibration and tapping into something and you're like, okay, well, 
what if I just can't even think about that? You, I'm in so much scarcity mindset right now. Like my whole body is tired and I can't get into that. It's not about just like, just pretending that you know how that feels like. Everything is energy and vibration. If there's anything else that allows you to stay in the calm, the calmness, it's all about being in that energy, not necessarily what you have to think in your head. And so it's really important to know that there's, um, don't have to go into the self-doubt again and the self-blaming of like, oh my God, I just can't. And what is wrong with me um, is to go, okay, what in my life right now makes me feel calm? And so in the body, notice again where that sits. So you know where to shift. And when, so you know which mindset you're in. And a little exercise that moves us um, from scarcity mindset to sufficiency is to take a deep breath. You know, when you're feeling a little bit of stress and anxiety, take a deep breath and just look around, look around you, you know, notice what you have. Um, one time I did a gratitude um, exercise and I just start noticing, oh, I appreciate the wall that's holding the roof right now. I appreciate the hook that has a space for my jacket right now. I appreciate this lamp. So notice what, um, look around, notice what you already have. Just give in, um, express gratitude towards them. If you have a cup of coffee, thank you, coffee. If you have a cup of water, thank you for hydrating me. And as you, if you have a, a cup of beverage, look into your, your drink. So like I have a, a cup of tea, look into the surface of that drink. So if you can't find, again, not faking it till you're making it, if you can't find that calm space by thinking there's enough for everybody, grab a cup of cup, fill it with water and stare it into that peaceful surface. And just seeing how calm it sits. There's no big waves and keep breathing in through your nose and out through your mouth. And I find that for me, that's an easy way instantly to go all is well. And then from that place, then you can go, I have enough right now. In this moment in time, I have enough and all as well. And um, yeah, so that's one way to really tap into that enoughness. And so once you're in that place of calmness and appreciation, that's when you can go, okay, I was feeling lack. Now I'm more calm. And where do I go from here? What do I want more of? And that's where abundance mindset comes in. And we're actually not going to put you in a breakout room, but I would like a few shares. So I'm going to stop sharing my slide. And if we can start recording um, for a little. Thanks, Carrie. Okay, so the fun stuff. So from scarcity, you know how to shift into sufficiency. And then from sufficiency, then we can start asking more um, for what we really want. Um, and so the sufficient, the abundance mindset, abundance mindset is the hundred percent trust that everything that is meant for you, everything that you want in order to do the work that you do, that is purpose, uh, purposeful and value aligned will be brought to you is already on its way to you. It's always there and there's no need to fight. Abundance mindset is the trust that this pie the, the the line around the pie doesn't exist and it can grow and it can grow to as big as the population as our needs um and it's if you feel if you think oh sh shoot i missed the opportunity there's always going to be more to come mm -hmm. as long as you manifest it as long as you tap into that abundance mindset so in the body so we got Scarcity, for me, scarcity is like super tight, shoulders down. And then sufficiency is like, okay, I can relax a little bit. And then the abundance, it's a little bit like, oh yeah, okay, this is good. You're excited. You're, you know, you're refreshed. The air is beautiful. Everything is beautiful. And so for me, that's how it feels like. So just notice what comes up as you tap into the abundance mindset energy. It is important to know that like scarcity, like sufficiency, the abundance mindset doesn't just come from money. When like money isn't, I always say money isn't the only uh, 
resources isn't the only abundance currency. When you're working on something that you love um, and you're freeing up a lot more mental resources and energy, and you're less likely to burn out. And we've all experienced this. We work on something, we're super excited, we're on, we're on purpose, we're aligned with our value. You can work 10 hour days. You won't even notice it. You won't remember. Sometimes you forget to eat. Sometimes you go to go to the bathroom because you're so in it. And because you create, when you're doing what you love, you're creating that abundance energy. You're creating that good feeling energy that keeps you going. Um. So yeah, it it when you're doing something that you love, it really just generates beautiful energy resources, and you're operating at a higher vibration, and um and that would directly bring in more abundance energy and more prosperity uh into your life when you're not doing something that you love you might feel like you're using twice as much energy to get one thing done when i was in accounting i love working with numbers but i didn't realize that what i don't love is doing the day in day out and feeling like what am i helping you make more money for and so everything takes extra long everything feels extra heavy at the end of the day i know energy to do anything else and when you're when your energy is depleted even if the money is coming in you were still very likely to go right into scarcity mindset because again your body is tight um so some of the common reason why we I'm just gonna check the chat and there's a few messages okay perfect we're good yeah, so some of the common reasons why we're having a hard time tapping into the abundance mindset or the feeling of abundant, uh, feeling abundant is that, again, we don't believe our worth. We don't trust that we can create PTSD from the Great Depression. Um, and we, that how we were taught growing up has, has a huge impact on what we believe in and what we we trust in our ability to create abundance. Um, so just notice that, right? Notice that and let it go and kind of go, okay, that doesn't work for me anymore. If we grow, if there's, there's another thing that I like to mention, if we grow up in being super independent, because we had to, because we were made to, we naturally have a harder time receiving help. I have this friend, every time we go out, she might, we might go to the grocery store, might go to the store. And I said, do you need help with that? She's like, no. And I was like, okay. So then years <laughs> later, we got closer. And I was like, what's like, why, why is that? What's happening? She's like, I never had help. I never had help growing up. My parents are busy working, uh, coming from an immigrant's family. And she said, even growing up as adults, I've never gotten a lot of help. And so that feels very uncomfortable. And when we're in that mindset, of, it feels uncomfortable to receive. And that's a limited belief. I'm going to name it. That's a limiting belief. If you can't receive, you can't receive the abundance that's around you. Even if you notice it, even if you're like, oh, there's all these people wanting, wanting to help me. There's all these opportunities. And you can't receive. None of, you're, you're building a barrier. And again, no guilt, no shame. Um, just really notice if that's happening. And so... We are going into a breakout um, for 10 minutes because we like it here and talk a little bit about um, what you learn about the three money mindset and um, which money mindset do you find yourself in the most and where do you want to be? I'm going to throw that in the chat. Thanks, Carrie. Can everyone see this? Okay, perfect. So we talked about like scarcity mindset is the heavy, you know, and how do we bring ourselves? So we, it's, it's so, it's, it's, it can be hard to jump straight from scarcity to abundance, the vibration, the energy to pull ourselves up there. So even if on the regular, on the, on the bad day, if we can just bring our, ourselves to sufficiency mindset with gratitude, that's awesome. And then once you're there, you're like, okay. This is comfortable. This is calm. And once you're able to, if you have a little bit more, then you tap into that love and compassion, especially the love and compassion for yourself. Then you can slowly start to bring yourself from the sufficiency mindset to abundance mindset. 
And again, it's all about the vibration. It's all about the energy. It's less about how, what does abundance mindset mean in my head? It's about how does that feel in our body? The minute we can tap into that high vibration, the excitement, the refreshing feeling uh, of abundance mindset, you know you're already, you know you're there. So your body knows, your body has so much wisdom. So this map just kind of tells you how we make our way up from scarcity to abundance is to add gratitude and a lot of love and compassion for yourself and people around you. And again, gratitude towards yourself as well. So I'm just noticing the chat. Okay, perfect. And then lastly, uh, transforming your money mindset, again, isn't about blaming yourself for where you're at. Transforming a money mindset is about identifying where you're at, evaluating, understanding, kind of like, why am I here? What stories are coming up? What mindset am, am I in right now? And it's that choice. If you always have a choice and if you choose to shift into a different mindset, you can start reframing those negative money beliefs, those stories and go, you know what? I don't want to be here. You can go. Thank you for protecting me. Thank you for making me feel safe. And I am ready for more abundance. Um, it's also very important to know your numbers. I said for me, with um, financial wellness, it's 80, and a lot of other things, it's 80% mindset, 20% um, actual doing, actual facts. So numbers are a part of it. A lot of times we can tap into a, a more common place when we don't know our numbers. So know your numbers, know where your numbers are at. Practice gratitude and mindfulness um, on a daily basis. When you're in that um, lack mentality, look around you. What is around you? What do you already have? And I love this next one, have an accountability buddy. Do you go like, hey, if we want to do journaling, have a buddy and go, hey, did you do your journaling this week? Hey, how did you do your budget this week? Did you look at your number this week? How did you feel? And look, seek professional professional advice. Work with the coach, have, um, have a financial advisor and anyone, anyone who is the area of expertise that you like to focus on, work with someone investing in yourself is an abundance mindset um, and celebrate small wins any little things when you think about a big, big project it can feel really heavy it can bring into a scarcity mindset if you break it down to little ones then it becomes a task list then it's a, it's project management in every little step that you have achieved reach your goal celebrate it that celebration is going to create more abundance mindset and oops, no. And so for, we've got about 12 minutes left. Uh, we've got final discussion. We can do that in the room. Um, and the question is, what is the one thing you're committed to today? Again, 80% mindset, 20% doing uh, to shift your money mindset. And anyone like to share? We've got some stuff in the chat, so I'm going to take a quick look. Thank you, Vanessa. Perfect. Yeah, anyone else, anyone like to share? And Carrie, if you like to um, pause recording, 